take a look at these. Look at these, would you? How cool are these? Ah, oh, absolutely love it. So, hi everyone, uh, Curtis Young here with Young LP Lovers. Uh, welcome if you're new, welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Uh, really appreciating you coming to spend some time with me today. So, I got something in the mail this week. Check this out. Uh, I go to the mail, I pick up this little package. Air mail all the way from Japan, yeah? Super excited to see this. So I knew what this was. Uh, Brian over at Tokyo Record Style uh, reached out to me and said he wanted to send me something. And, uh, and it just came in the mail. So that's really cool. So Brian, first off, man, thank you. That's really cool. You sh really shouldn't have, but I'm really... Uh, I'm really glad you did because I absolutely love these. These are beautiful. So let me uh, read it really quickly. Well, let me tell you about Brian's channel, first of all. So Brian um, is over in Tokyo. He has a project that he calls Tokyo Record Style. So I guess the YouTube video would be part of that. He has a newsletter. Brian is a photographer and a writer and a music lover. And he documents people on the street in Tokyo, yeah? usually with their record shopping bags, and he gets them to talk about what records they've bought, and he kind of documents it, puts out a, oh, I don't know if it's monthly, maybe bi-monthly sort of a newsletter. He maintains a website. He's got this YouTube channel. Brian's got lots of other things going on as well. So if you haven't seen Brian's page called Tokyo Record Style, uh, check it out. I'm going to leave a link down below, of course. So. Yeah, once again, Brian, man, this is really cool. So let me read quickly a bit of a, just a little excerpt from the letter he sent along as well. Hi, Curtis. I hope you enjoy Miro's message of blue identity as much as I do best from Tokyo. So I guess if I got the story right, I'm going to link to Brian's story below where he first mentions uh, blue identity. But I guess this is the, uh, this is the, one of the cards that came with it. Greetings from Japan, and it says, Blue is free, blue is noble, blue never racial discrimination. So, yeah, I guess the idea was that uh, Brian was in the record shop and he's seen the work by this artist and it really grabbed him. And, and so he asked about it, and he reached out to the artist. And uh, if I understand right, the artist sent him some of this work and he decided to pass it along to other people, right? And so I thought that was really cool. The style, I guess, is all done in blue and the concept originated, I guess, from the idea, you know, we discriminate against black and white and yellow and red, but we don't discriminate against blue. So in this case, blue is meant to be, you know, unifying. It's uh, meant to be non-discriminatory and the artist has taken musicians, right? Uh, mainly hip hop musicians and reggae musicians and created images in this particular style, which is perfect for me because, you know, my first love of music was hip hop and right now I'm on a bit of a reggae journey and I've been really uh, purposefully uh, seeking out and expanding my reggae collection. And if you tune in for the next video, you'll see some of my recent reggae finds uh, and that should be up in the next few days as well. So I'm gonna show each of these to you and talk about them a little bit. Uh, starting with this here, I guess this, I think would be uh, the artist Miro's calling card. And again, uh, Miro has an Instagram. I'm gonna to link to that down below. Um, this reminds me of in China, in the south of China, in the Sichuan province, they have a masked performer, similar style to this. I know I'm imagining it probably has much more of a Japanese uh, origin, but it definitely reminds me of the, the Szechuan performers as well. So who do we have here? First up, look at these. Uh, they come in, like some of them, uh, look at this, like, I don't know what you call this, like almost hologram, like reflective uh, image there. So this is Lee Perry, of course, the great uh, upsetter, Lee Perry. Look, look at that, that's so, so nice. There's the artist's signature on both of them here. 
Um, yeah, so what can I tell you about Lee Perry, if you're not familiar with Lee Perry? So Lee Perry, uh, famous for his dub, uh, kind of being a pioneer of dub music, right? Uh, before that, I guess he really got his start back in Studio One with Cox and Dodd, uh, kind of as, a, as an everything kind of guy and got into producing, um, left Studio One uh, on, you know, uh, conflict, conflictual terms, is that a word, conflictual? Anyway, uh, just under disagreements, right? And um, did some really uh, groundbreaking work with the Whalers in, what, 70, 71? Um, with the albums um, uh, Soul Revolution and Soul Rebel that really kind of helped define the whaler sound going forward i uh, had a following it with them started his own black arc studio produces all the great music that comes out of black arc as well eventually burns down black arc anyway yeah lee perry fascinating figure in the history of reggae music and an artist really that i need much more of in my collection so lee perry right there next up we've got two ogs of the ska era yeah, so we've got uh, Prince Buster. Look at that. This might be one of my favorites with that yellow color. That's so cool. And we have Don Drummond. Uh, so let's talk about Don Drummond first. Don Drummond uh, was one of the Scatolites. So the Scatolites were the house band for Studio One. Uh, before that, he was basically a jazz trombonist, recruited by Cox and Dodd into Studio One, where they laid down the tracks for all the big ska names coming through Studio One, including the Whalers. Um, yeah, then Don Drummond was convicted of murdering his girlfriend, actually, in, I want to say, the mid-60s, went to jail, uh, actually went to an asylum because he was found... Uh, uh, what would you say, that cr criminally insane? Uh, and then he died there a few years later. I think there's some controversy around his death, the, the cause of death. It's listed as natural causes. But um, according to the Wikipedia page, uh, there's some controversy around that. Um, the Scatolites would then break up uh, after this. And... I think they reformed much later, like in maybe even the 80s or 90s, maybe probably during that like two-tone revival. Um, but yeah, but uh, yeah. And then here, uh, Prince Buster, uh, again, uh, kind of an architect of that ska era uh, of Jamaican music, right through into the rock steady era. Um yeah, on the Blue Beat label, there's actually a Record Store Day release of Prince Buster this year. I almost got it, but ended up not getting it. I've still got my eye on it. I don't know. Maybe I'll pick it up. I'm sorry, it's Jamaican music, I should say. It was moving more in towards kind of roots reggae. Uh, Prince Buster became less prevalent during this time and kind of, again, kind of took a, a, a back seat uh, to emerge later on again, but uh, not as kind of prevalent as he was during that Blue Beat, uh, Ska and Rocksteady era. Yeah, so great stuff here as well. And then I also have this one, which I've already put in a frame, uh, Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia and the Messiah for the Rastafari people. Um... Yeah, I just love this. This is fantastic. I framed it right away. This is going in on my on my shelf beside Bob here. So Bob and Selassie are going to be hanging out. Uh, Rastafari. Um, yeah, I won't say too much about uh, about that. So really cool, Brian. I'm really really thankful for these. Uh, yeah, too kind, brother. Really really appreciate it. Uh, they're going up on the walls somewhere. If you like the, the artwork you're seeing uh, and you like the idea of Blue Identity, again, I'm gonna leave that link down below where you can go check out Miro's work. 
Uh, don't forget to check out Brian's channel as well. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to pay you back, man, but uh, I'm going to pay you back or pay it forward, perhaps. Uh, yeah, absolutely love it. So, yeah, a little bit about uh, some v VCLT, I suppose. Vital community love. Much appreciated, Brian. Peace. One love.